So you mentioned that you did radiation monitoring, obviously, because you have some data there. Uh, did you, uh, during your experiments or shortly afterwards, use any form of scintillator to um, look for photon energies? No, we, we never had access uh, uh, to this experiment. We used uh, a commercially available a very simple uh, uh, device which is able to measure just it's a Geiger counter actually uh, alpha beta gamma intensity but not the spectrum was it post experiment and then you brought the device close to it and did a count or was it during experiment or what not never during because uh, <clears throat> you cannot put the device into the microwave actually we have measured uh, before and and after but usually uh, our experiment that whenever we have removed uh, uh, the uh, radioactive sample from from our reactor we started uh, the the measurement uh, and uh, never meddled for three weeks with it it was kept in the same position for three weeks and that was uh, for our uh, device uh, roughly the maximum uh, duration of time until we could observe uh, three weeks i understand that you have um, the designs for your latest reactor, um, which uh, people can see in the video. Um, how much would it cost to produce a, a facsimile of this reactor? Uh, what you have seen is a simple one, uh, which was uh, actually used uh, the parts taken from a kitchen microwave uh, uh, oven there uh, the frequency is fixed 100 hertz you like it or not then we added another device uh, which was able to somehow modify the amplitude but not the frequency uh, this device uh, given that uh, we used uh, used uh, parts uh, uh, is not uh, extremely e expensive actually 20,000 Hungarian forints uh, is the parts and all the rest uh, is if you use the, the original electromagnetic cavity resonator which has a very poor efficiency then it's uh, say uh, 50,000 Hungarian forints uh, which is uh, 300 uh, Hungarian forints is one US dollars now. So it's not a big deal. However, uh, one step uh, uh, higher when we use the cylindrical electromagnetic re re uh, resonator, cavity resonator, and that was very important, very useful. Uh, it increased the efficiency also. And uh, we were able then to manufacture uh, quartz uh, resonators also, uh, then about uh, 50 dollars, uh, 50 US dollars each, uh, roughly, when our glass blower was still uh, operating. But the, our major step has been that after three years of, of arduous work, uh, our power supply have been completely redesigned and improved. So even the frequency and the amplitudes uh, we were uh, able uh, uh, to, to modify. And that uh, made possible the, the perfect resonance because during this experiment, of course, the temperature is increasing. That means uh, the speed of uh, sound uh, within the plasma is changing. So you cannot really get a uh, pure resonance simply because it's getting hotter. So in one instance you are you have a resonant plasma in the next it is moving away. But uh, this device uh, which have been quite expensive uh, to, to develop was the perfect uh, device and only one have been produced out of, uh, of, of this device.
So you're saying something around about three hundred dollars for the basic device. Uh, the, the, very, microwave oven uh, the, 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 the very basic device. Yes. And then you're saying that per reactor, when you had the ability to blow uh, uh, quartz, and the importance of quartz is that it has much less impurities, uh, to no impurities. And, and the melting point is, oh. uh, is, is good enough. No other uh, uh, glass uh, has the ability to withstand those temperatures because glass quartz is melting at 1700 degree and our plasma sometimes exceeded that. Do you think that the actual use of silicon in there is important and I, I'm, the reason I'm saying this is because of uh, Mahadev and Srinivasan's presentation at ICCF20 where he was looking at a carbon arc furnace and that they were producing silicon iron alloys and they were apparently claiming to see excess iron so yes. you have silicon you have carbon and you're getting more iron out and this is similar story to what you're seeing do you think if you made a sintered fully uh, um, homogeneous uh, uh, aluminium oxide resonant cavity uh, you may not see the production of iron do you think that the silicon may be playing a, a, an important role here no, because uh, in my paper you can see that, in my opinion, uh, iron might be produced uh, by uh, adding two aluminium nuclei together, and the aluminium is coming from carbon and nitrogen. So this is almost the reverse of Alberto Carpenteri's work, where he's saying that at, on subduction zones, uh, you are getting our iron fracto fissioned to two aluminium. So you're saying there's an earlier stage where you're producing aluminium in, in this chain yes. of reactions, and that those two are then coming together to produce the iron. The iron, yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, uh, so you were saying about $50 to make one of these uh, fused quartz reactions. If, if you do it for yourself. Uh, and then the you were having to machine and uh, uh, the resonant cavity and a custom transformer and magnetron. Was the magnetron custom? I mean, were you machining no, that? Or? The, the magnetron was the, the commercial magnetron. Mm -hmm. We never used uh, anything else. Later we used water-cooled uh, magnetrons, but it's still not expensive uh, in this household range, of course. So are we saying that maybe for sort of $5,000 you could achieve a, a facsimile of what you had and Mm. when you were last uh, able to produce them. Yes, 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 I think so.